Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Please rise and let's pray. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have created, this day when you have allowed us to draw breath and to come into your presence for another day to worship and honor and praise you. Lord, we thank you for all of the ladies in our lives today. It's not a day for a Hallmark greeting card. It's a day to honor all of your daughters. And we thank you, Lord, that we can do that in your presence. For you made us from the beginning male and female. Male and female, you created them. And you gave us each to be the help meet. So that when we look in the mirror, we see our reflection. And we are made whole in your presence. So this morning we honor all of the sisters and the daughters that will be in heaven with us on the last day. Come now and bless the women, the single women, the young women who are growing up, the moms, the grandmoms, and the great-grandmothers. Bless them all in your presence and help us again to hear the stories of faith that have come down to us by our mothers because they have put faith in their Father God, who is you. To you be all glory in the heaven, Father. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let us sing our first song. Well, welcome once again this morning. And we're going we're to sing some songs to, to open the service as uh, songs of worship, songs of praise. And let us um, lift, up our, lift up our voices to the one who, uh, the only one who deserves them. Let's sing glory to his name. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. I am so one saved from sin Jesus so sweetly abides within there at the cross where he took me in glory to his oh precious fountain oh precious fountain that saves from sin I am so glad I have entered in there Jesus saves me and he Glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name, there to my heart was the blood of blood, glory to his name, come to this fountain so rich and sweet, Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of blood. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to Next song is probably one of my favorite worship songs. It's one that uh, I don't know if we can imagine how great, 
how great God is and his glory and his splendor. But, uh, you know, sometimes I, I play the song, I maybe get a glimpse of it, and maybe we, we can get a glimpse of it this morning as, as we get to the chorus. If uh, Hopefully uh, you know this chorus. If you want to close your eyes, lift up your hands, or however you wish to, uh, to worship and praise, feel free to do it this morning as we uh, just go before the throne of uh, the living God. Through the splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice. All the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. Darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God! Sing with me how great is our God. Of all will see how great, how great is our God. my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. 
seeking you as a precious jewel lord to give up i'd be a fool you are my all seated. At this time, we're going to, um, we're going to take, some, uh, t- take a moment to uh, give back to God the, all the blessings He's given to us. And if you brought an offering, offering this morning, you can bring it forward as we start this next song. If you wish to donate online, or if you're watching online, you wish to, to donate online later on, uh, you can do that at clintonnazarene.org or through the Church Center app, and you can see our church name on there is CCC Naz. This next song is a, uh, just a, it's a beautiful song of one of, um, as the word says, it's gratitude. It's uh, just uh, thanking God for all the things he's done for us that I don't know if we can ever repay him, but we can never repay him, except he's just asking for us, for our lives, for our, uh, our, our sacrifice, and for us just to follow his, his, his calling. And so uh, as we, uh, we sing the song, just be, uh, just be thankful for all the, those blessings and just give back to him what we can. All my words fall short. I've got nothing new. How could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these song as I often do. Every song must end, but you never do. And I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Because all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I've nothing else fit for a king. 
except for a heart singing hallelujah hallelujah I've got one response and just one more move with my arms stretched wide I will worship you and I throw up my hands praise you again and again the my hand is a hallelujah hallelujah and I know it's not much but I've nothing else fit for a king except for a heart singing hallelujah hallelujah come on my soul don't you get shy on me lift up your song you've got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Don't get a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. You got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I lift up my hands and praise you again and again. Excel that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much. I've nothing else fit for a king except for a heart singing hallelujah. Well, as we go to prayer time this morning, I'd like to pray for all the, all the women of the church. And I'd like to do this if we can. I'd like everyone to, if there's a lady by herself, if a, if a man will go alongside of her. Boys, you can help with the girls. I'd like every woman to have a man standing next to them. So if you don't have that, go find one, share one. We are going to pray. We're going to pray for all of the daughters of God this morning. Okay? So venture on out. All right. So let's just pray for the lady next to us. And we're going to pray for Laura, who's not with us this morning, who's at home, through Alex. Father, we come now, and we ask you to touch these women. Lord, they are wells of compassion, wells of grace, wells of love. But frequently, there's no one to hold them up. They hold us up. They hold up our lives again and again and again. They're always, always in the background doing every little task, every little thing in the church, in the home. And seldom is there even a word of thank you or gratitude. We take it for granted and we should not. For of the greatest of the reasons you came to earth the first one was to serve and to not be served. 
and the ladies of our life serve us constantly. Some of them have very heavy burdens. Some of them need physical healing right now. Some are on the verge of complete collapse. Some of them mentally are ready to collapse, spiritually ready to give up. Some of them have physical burdens, both ailments of physical health, but also those in the world as simple as needing another car and trying to find the the way to make the finances work, taking care of household chores as the prices go up, trying to figure out even the food for the table as the stresses of this modern world escalate and escalate almost weekly. And I pray right now by your spirit that you would just come and you would comfort your daughters and that you would give them supernatural strength in mind, in body, and in soul. And you would renew them with your well of compassion, your well of empathy, your well of grace and mercy. Come now, Lord Jesus Christ, by your spirit and renew all of the ladies of our church and all of the women of our area that we minister to and have them stand as they have always stood for you, for faith, for love, for country, and for home. To you be all glory in the church now and forevermore. And all of God's people said, Amen. We are going to have Kids Connection, even though Melinda cannot be with us this morning. So young people, come on down. And I'm just going to stand. That's okay, instead of sit. So what I want to talk to you about this morning is what you might not be able to hear quickly when we do the actual uh, thing today. Today I'm going to talk about two important people who were married. And they're often forgotten in the church, almost entirely. And they are the last of the Old Testament priests and wives before the coming of the Lord, Savior Jesus Christ in the New Testament. Can anybody tell me who that couple is? Adam and Eve would be the Old Testament, but now the Old going into the New. Not the beginning, but the next beginning when Jesus comes. Anybody know who I'm talking about? He was a priest. His name started with a Z. His wife started with an E. Huh? Zebedee's another person that's, that, that was James and John you, from your Bible study. Zacharias and Elizabeth. Okay? Frequently we don't hear about them, but listen to me. They were amazing people. They were at least in their late 50s or early 60s, and they still had no children. Can you imagine wanting children your whole life and you can't have them? Yeah, the desire of their heart was to raise up the next generation of the priesthood, the next generation of the women of the, of the daughters of Aaron, and to keep the faith going. And God had not answered their prayer, even though they had been faithful in everything. They kept all the law, all the ordinances. They kept their house perfect. They honored God. It said that they were righteous people before God, but yet they still had not had a child, and they prayed constantly that somehow God would come and do something for them. So after the main priesthood life of Zacharias was over, he's in his 60s, he's semi-retired, he only works two weeks out of the year in the temple, the rest of the year he has to do all kinds of chores in the local village, she's been hard working in, the, in, in, their, in her house all the time, finally God answers their prayer, and he gives them the greatest of the Old Testament prophets in my opinion. Because the last of the Old Testament prophets was John the Baptist. And he got to prepare the way for the coming of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. He was cousins with him. They grew up together. John was six months older than Jesus. And their whole life, they were able to usher in this new kingdom that we now celebrate on Sunday morning, every Sunday. All because of the faithfulness of two people who kept the priesthood going, who kept everything in line, Zacharias and Elizabeth. She was an amazing woman. When the Son of God came to visit her in the womb of her younger cousin Mary, Jesus, she recognized the movement of her child and the movement of the Holy Spirit. She was so in tune with who God was. And she was the first person to ever praise the coming 
of Jesus Christ other than the angel to her husband. So a woman spoke the first words of good news in the New Testament, and it was Elizabeth. Mary was second. Zacharias was third. We forget about her, and we should not. She was a great woman. Elizabeth means daughter of a queen, and indeed, and a daughter of a king. And indeed, she is that. She came up from the daughters of Aaron, and she was also a daughter of God. And I want you to remember her life and Zacharias' life when you go forward. Always doing what's right, even when God does not give you what you want. There's the message. Even when you don't get, you know, the right toy or the right whatever, okay? God is listening. He's answering your prayers. You must remain faithful to him. And if you do, God will bless you. Even though it took them a long time, they finally saw his complete blessing, and his complete blessing was for the whole world. Who has them this morning? Miss Megan. Go see Miss Megan. I should have known that. I helped her this morning. I forgot. I'm getting old. Go see, go see your mom. That's it. Okay. See, there's mom again. God bless you guys. Let's jump into the announcements for this week. Okay, so a call to write worship is on summer break. I don't know about you guys, but I'm kind of bummed. I like coming to Revelation study, so, but uh, I'm also kind of happy because I got to I got to do a lot more material this summer. I'm trying to chomp off chapter seven, eight, and nine before we come back in the fall. So, a little light, little light research and study over the summer. That's a good summer break, right? Um, but that's we'll be back in the, we'll be back in the fall right after uh, Labor Day. Summer break also for the ladies' Bible study. You guys ha- had a little lunch in there, and they got together and had a good celebration. And the ladies prayed for me, and I was in a desperate, desperate place on the day they had their celebration. I was in a place where I just couldn't take any more. You ever have one of those days? All right. I went outside. Uh, the guy came. They rescheduled our, our uh, who likes the railings out there? Who saw it was all finished when you came in? Looks nice, right? All right. Well, that, that was a day of trials, all I can tell you. They came early, and uh, they said, we can do it right now if you can give us some water. And I said, no problem. I'll just turn on the hose. Well, I went out there, and turns out that the weed whackers had hit the hose, and I cut a hole in the side of it, and then the, the bevel ring made of aluminum had actually threaded itself, and I couldn't get it off. And Jimmy Sapio and I with, like, two, two wrenches, and that man is huge. He was giving it all he had. I mean, that's, that's a barrel chest if I've ever seen one. We could not get that thing off. And I said, Almighty God, I am, I am about to blow my top. <laughs> so the ladies were downstairs praying, and, I, and he was getting parts. And we jerry-rigged it. And with a minute and about 48 seconds to two minutes to go, for the guy had to leave and charge us a $195 service call for nothing and, and rescheduled for two weeks. We got the water turned on. And lo and behold, you have a beautiful set of steps out there. So thank you, ladies, for your faith and your prayer. Even when you have a Polish pastor who loses his temper. Okay. Christianity 101 is also on summer break. We'll be getting back to that. And we'll be looking at uh, what, is, what is how to come to faith when we come back. We've gone through the Trinity and some other things. VBS Council is next week. Melinda, even though she got injured yesterday, wants me to let you know that she's going to be here somehow, some way. Okay? And uh, pray for her. Uh, the dog and her had a little ker- kerfuffle. That's the best way to put it. Loud noise, and he spun and got her foot and took her down, and she hit her rib cage. So right on it, too. I heard it go, boom, and I was like, ooh. So no breaks, uh, but she's bruised up. Anybody has bruised ribs, you know you can't, you can't do much. So pray for her right now. I'm supposed to take her to dinner, and that's not happening. All right. Sweet hour of prayer is June 10th. So uh, come, come out with that. Come out and see uh, the ladies and pray. It's tomorrow. They got it wrong. Oh, they, 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 they moved ahead. That's right. It's this month, too. I'm sorry. Tomorrow and then June 10th. My bad. Okay. All right. All right. Let me grab my notes. All right. All right. So I'm going to be doing a two-part series for, for, for this year for, for Father's Day and Mother's Day. And this one's entitled, A Faithful Daughter of God and of Aaron. Uh, The one for for Father's Day will be a faithful son of God and of Aaron. I'm going to be looking at the life of Elizabeth today, the life of Zacharias, 
on uh, June 19th when we get to um, Father's Day. So there's the, there's the scriptures, and they're all embedded in there. A lot of scripture this morning, so I'm just going to keep reading, and then we'll get to it. What I want to point out to you is this entire section starts off with a chiasmata, smata, a set of bookends. Look at A1 and A2 when you look up there on the notes, and you will see something that right away Luke is bracketing material. And whenever you bracket material, the stuff in the middle is of ultra importance in the, in the scripture. So that ultra part is B1, B2, C1, C2. So let's read this now, this beginning, and take a look at this. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah. His wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and walking in all the ordinance of the Lord, blameless before him. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren. And they were both well advanced in years. There's our story right there for us. Notice the, in the middle, they were righteous and blameless before the Lord. That means they walked almost perfectly with him. Holy people living for God in holiness. So it was that while Zacharias was serving his priest before God in the order of his division of Abijah, according to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn the incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people was praying outside at the hour of incense for the evening offering. And an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of the incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and great fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard. See, they've been offering it all their life, and there it is. And your wife Elizabeth shall bear you a son. And you shall call his name John, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zacharias said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am indeed a very old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. And the angel answered him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God and I was sent to speak to you and to bring you these glad tidings. But behold, you will be mute and unable to speak until the day these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their own time. And the people waited and waited for Zacharias, and they marveled that he lingered so long in the temple. But when he came out, he could not speak to them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned to them, but remained speechless. And so it was, as soon as the days of his service as priest were completed, he departed unto his own house. Now after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she hid herself away five months, saying, The Lord has dealt with me in the days when he looked upon me to take away my reproach among the people. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was greatly troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this might be. And then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you also will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Yesu. Yeshua. And he will be great, and he will be called Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever 
and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is to be born of you will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now her sixth month for her her who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And then Mary said, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Now Mary arose in those days and went up into the hill country to make haste to the city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary in her ear that the babe leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled at that very moment with the Holy Spirit. And she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is it granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leapt in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told to her from the Lord. The canticle of Elizabeth is what you've heard there. Now Elizabeth's full time came for her also to be delivered, and she brought forth a son. And when her neighbors and relatives heard how the Lord had shown great mercy to her, they rejoiced with her. And all those who heard them kept them in their hearts, saying, What kind of child will this one be? And the hand of the Lord was with him from the beginning. And so the child grew and became strong in the Holy Spirit. And he was in the desert. So the day of his manifestation to Israel. We don't usually hear that much scripture, but I needed to make sure the whole background story was in there. What we'll hear on Father's Day will be the beginning of this and then switching over to his canticle and what his response was. The first question we need to ask ourselves is, who were these two people? First thing I want to mention is, what was important to Noah was important to Adam and Eve. You'll need a pink one and a blue one. That'll be important later. There, there's my political speech for the day. You remember, remember being in school and honestly hearing this? No purpling. Who remembers that? The nuns would always do that. Boys, no purpling. What were they saying? Pink and blue make what? They were telling us what, how we were supposed to act, okay? You'll need a pink one and a blue one. That'll be important later. That's what the nuns would always tell us. A1, long-time, hard-working husband and wife team. How many of you feel like that's where it's really at? That's really marriage. Isn't it? How long, be honest, how long does all that romantic garbage last? And people say, well, that's because you men don't try to do enough to stoke the fire. That's probably true. We're quite lazy. See, for men, it's kind of like conquering. Well, we got that, so we're done. No. You know where the real romance is? The commitment. You know where the real romance is? I love you today like I loved you before, and I'm going nowhere. You know what the real romance is? Working out all the details day after day. I see some of you crying. It's been a lot of years for a lot of you. Amen. Good, good tears, right? It's the, it's the I forgive you for the umpteenth time. Huh? Right? It's the man hiding an angry face with flowers and chocolate. <laughs> Please forgive me. Okay. Real marriage is suffering together laughing together, right? Praying together, staying together, right unto whatever day we have left. And the world has forgotten this. This is why we're in the place we're in. They've invented all kinds of ways to try to get around it. Now, if you're not married, that's okay too, because you can be married to the Lord. Your heart can be so close to Him that you can be a celibate, and see, that's the key, a celibate single individual where your sexuality is not active for the sake of the Lord and instead you love people with a holy love. And so whatever it is, daughters out there this morning, remember, 
you get to go to heaven first, you had to put up with us. There's probably a short line for women, I figure, and a really long line for the guys that probably does like a DMV thing, you know? And of course, mine, I'll, if I get the door stopped at the door, I'll be happy. But they were faithful. They got married. She would have been about 16, maybe 15 when they got married. He's in his 60s. And how do we know this? Because at the age of 50 to 55, all the priests had to retire from active service. I wish that was in vogue right now. I'd be ready to retire a long three years ago. And I could have gotten paid to do only two weeks' work. Boy, that would be a good, good gig, huh? All right. But here's what happened. They called him back every year for two weeks of service. They took the 12 divisions of the 12 tribes within the 12 of the, of the Levites, and they divided them and subdivided them into a second group to get 24. And so what you had is of the people of Aaron, of the tribe of Levi, of the sub-tribe, and you heard that today, Zacharias was of the sub of the sub of the sub, Abijah. That was his group. Okay? And he was assigned to help look over the house of Judah, from which Jesus would come. And he was the first of the two of Judah. Abijah was the first one. And so he had this two weeks of service. And their, their, their years are different than ours, right? They go by the moon. So they have, their years are slightly shorter. And so the bottom line is they divided up 48 weeks, and then they all came together for four for the festivals. And so they worked six weeks out of the year. Two weeks special, four weeks together. And then the older men went about their duties within the local community, helping with the physical needs of people more than anything else. So we know he was at least that old because he was going for his two weeks of service. We know he was already past the age of the first retirement of the heavy all year working as a priest. It says they're well advanced in years. You know what that means? Over 65, over 70. They're, they're actually older than that. So he's not just 55. He's really old. And everybody knows in here, right, no woman at 65 is going to have a child. Okay. There's just no way. Outside of in vitro fertilization and a dish, you'd never have a child. So this is a complete miracle. And that's another thing I want to point out here about this whole thing. So they're well advanced. Every year, though, every day they recommitted to marriage and recommitted to God. She's a faithful daughter of Aaron. Did you hear that? That means she's going about the priestly wife duty. Let me tell you something. There's no lonelier woman in the church than the wife of the pastor. Nobody's lonelier than that. You know why? Really cannot establish the friendships that other people have in the church. You move to an area, those other people are established. You really can't confide in them all the way because there's some things you can't talk about. You really can't get that close because you might get detached. And everybody says, oh, what a wonderful person she is, but she's lonely. I want to let you in on a little, little, little secret here. The loneliest place is the wife of the pastor. She listens to everything he has to do things he can't tell her, burdens that he puts out there, but there's nobody for her, so the pastor is it. And sometimes, you know, in a marriage, even on the best of days, it doesn't always work out. And so here's Elizabeth. I want you to understand this. She's so faithful, it's unbelievable. Attending to the needs of all of her neighbors, attending to all the needs in the local synagogue, the local church. She has been doing this and doing this and doing this, and she's never gotten the one thing that she always wanted. Because like every other girl who's raised right and loved right, you dream from the moment you're four or five of meeting the prince, getting married, and having children. That's the normal course of things. Long-time faithful and righteous servants of the one true God. Look what it says about them. It starts with righteous and ends with blameless. Does it get any closer than that? Do you know there's very few people who are spoken like this about? A handful. Can you name them? Noah, Enoch, Elijah, Joseph, Daniel. There's only a few. This is the only husband and wife team from the Old Testament that's spoken about like this. The only one other than Abraham and Sarah. So they're in pretty good company, right? Think about that in all the Bible. And so they're walking so close to God, it's unbelievable. And, look, and walking means physical work. You know what it means? When you get up in the morning, when you go out, at lunch, when you come back in, at the dinner table, when you close your eyes, wherever you go, always being faithful. So they were quite the team. 
What was their obstacle and what was their greatest desire? Well, it's very apparent from the scripture. Old age, fertility, and a child of their own. They had desired it for the whole lifetime. That was their obstacle. They, had, they were unable to conceive. They had no child. Elizabeth was barren. They were both well, well advanced in years. There's the obstacle God has to overcome for their desire to be met. What did they do all the time while waiting for God to act? Now, this is the key for all of us. This is the lesson this morning for all of us in this room. They remain faithful, hardworking, righteous servants of God every day. Doesn't matter whether God answers or not. Doesn't matter whether he answers the way I want. I will serve him anyway. It's Job. Even if he slay me, yet will I serve him. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Sometimes the Lord doesn't even give. I'm not going to bore you with the story. You've heard it a lot, but I'll say it again. My wife and I waited 15 years, 9 months, 3 weeks, and 2 days to adopt. And then not in the greatest of situations, to adopt very late in life. My oldest daughter was almost 11 when we got her. All right? And the youngest one was just almost 9. They had been raised in a semi-Christian home, but there had been a lot of abuse. Before that, because the great-grandmother was in charge, and when that happens, you know what the problem is. Nobody awards great-grandma the responsibility unless everything else has failed multiple times. God does not always answer your prayer the way you see, but God does answer prayer. Melinda and I remained faithful. Once a week, every week, we prayed for children. Fifteen years, nine months, three weeks, two days. Okay? When it happened, we were not shocked. We didn't know how to respond and what kind of joy to show. We knew he would. We just didn't know how. And that doesn't make it easy the way sometimes he responds, but he does. And so we heard all of our lives, and I'm sure they heard it more than we because they were close to 70. If you just had enough faith, Pastor, you'd have children by now. Imagine hearing that in your church. Thank you. Thank you very much. That, that helps me a lot. I, I, I need some more counseling like that. Can you imagine? Well, there's something, you, you, you must have something in your life that's not right, or God would have answered it. You know how many people never have children that want them? <laughs> that's, not, that's not the answer. I mean, it could be, but it's not. We, we heard time and time again, well, well, God will do it. Well, God will do it. Well, God will do it. Well, that's nice, too. Those are platitudes. You know what I wish people would say? We're praying with you. They continually brought their faithful prayer petition before God. Look what the angel says. Your prayer has been heard. Now imagine, all, now imagine lifting this up for about 40 years. Do you understand? 40 years you're going to prayer for a child. Does that mean it wasn't heard the first time? No. The angel's not saying it wasn't heard the first time. It will now come to pass. In God's good timing, by God's own design, this shall come to pass. And this is something else we need to remember when we're praying. It doesn't always happen the way we want when we want. And we can see a lot of down before it back up again. But I will remind you of the whole of the Bible. There's a descend and an ascend. And the descending is to change or clear or alter something in life. And the ascending is glory and blessing and gift. So we got to go down to come up a lot of times, so don't forget that in life. All right, what will be the outcome of your faithfulness and your righteousness if you decide to do it? And a lot of you have decided to do it for a lot of years already, but what will happen if you continue to be faithful and continue to be faithful and continue to be faithful? God will bring you blessing, joy, and a faithful inheritance. Look what the scripture tells us. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and, there, and shall drink neither strong wine or wine, be filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. Now, what about the people who never have children? I know a lot of women. I know a lot of men too. But since this is Mother's Day, I know a lot of women who never have children of their own, but they are spiritual mothers, and they're amazing mothers. And they have a brood of children that they administer to, and they continue to do it in the church. They continue to give of their lives, and they continue to help guide godly offspring. So whether we have them physically or not, we can spiritually do that. 
I know many men that do that too and mentor and help children even though they do not have their own. We have this mandate, men and women, to do these things. God will visit his people and call them through you and your offspring or the offspring of the church. Others will come to know God and be with him in eternity because you were faithful. Your faithfulness will rub off. It will be handed down. Some people that you spend that time with in your home or in the church, they will get it, and then they will do amazing things, and people will come to God, and your faithfulness will be handed down through them, and your inheritance is souls in the kingdom of heaven. Not just your own, not just the ones you raise up in Sunday school, but those that they raise because they have been faithful. That's the inheritance here. And it's eternal. Cannot be taken away. Look what it says about him. He'll turn many back to God. This is what we need to pray for our children as we raise them up in the church, as we give them the children's church and all these other things that we do in the VBS is that they will find the Lord and they will prosper. And there'll be another generation to carry on the name. This is why we bring them to Bible quiz. And this is why we bring them to VBS. Why we bring them to all these things. To keep putting in front of them our faith that they may get it. The modern idea in the churches is amazing. Oh, well, you know, there's churches now teaching. They don't even need to really come to faith. If you had it, they'll just automatically get it, like catching a cold or something. This week, we saw the capitulation of the United Methodist Church. Total capitulation. The global Methodist church is now going to take off and try to run with the ball that they ran with for hundreds of years, while the other goes apostate, right here in our town, apostate. Apostate to the nth degree, proclaiming that marriage can be anything you want it to be, and anybody can serve in any capacity, and God just loves you because you just love, because that's love to you. Yet another one, gone, gone. They just keep falling like flies. There, been, there was a tax at the last convention for the Nazarene church, and it'll happen this year when they, when they get together again, called the quadrennium every four years. You watch. You watch the hawks descend on this church in Indianapolis, Indiana this year. You watch them try to change it, and you watch faithful people say, no, not here. This is Malta, if you remember last week. We're not having that here. Thank you very much. And if you do it without our permission, we will boot you, and we'll take your credentials with you, and we'll make sure nobody in that church stays. You cannot change the Word of God, and you cannot allow it to happen, okay? Because this is the way it's supposed to be. One man, one woman, men and women walking side by side in the church as equals before the Lord, serving the Lord as sons and daughters. God always keeps his promises. Isn't that the only comforting thing in the world? I'm sorry, is there anything more comforting than God keeps his promises? Because one of them is what? Eternal life. That's a biggie, I hear. Good retirement plan. You don't even need to have a 401k or anything else. His wife conceives. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being about 60 years old and finally it happens to you? Notice what she does. She hides herself away for five months. You know what she did? She went and had a private praise and worship service with the Lord for five months. She didn't answer the world. She didn't talk to the world. She went and celebrated the beauty of being a mother. This is what's wrong with the world today. They're now saying, as Jesus said at going to the cross to the women of Jerusalem, blessed are the wombs that never bore. And blessed are the breasts that never nurse. That's what we're saying now in society. Isn't that what abortion is? Isn't that what it is? Isn't this crazy law in, in California where they can kill a child after it's born now? How, how, how that person's not a constitutional citizen, I don't know. They breathe. Isn't this crazy? The murder of the innocents? The greatest thing a woman can ever do is bring life into this world and train it for God, that child. And train that soul up in the way it should go and have that child decide for the Lord the same faith she had. The greatest honor in the world, and no man can have it. He can only support it. 
What we need to be teaching our daughters is the greatest thing that can happen to you is that you raise up godly sons and daughters yourself for the Lord Jesus Christ, for which you will be rewarded again and again and again. Because you know what you did? You served your mandate. And I'm going to say that this morning in the church. Your mandate is to be a godly mother, a faithful instructor, and even to guide your husband when he needs it because he doesn't always know either. Even though he's trying to lead the house and, and, and lead it, he needs that godly voice constantly guiding him. Our faithful response and testimony. Immediately, Elizabeth says this, the Lord has dealt with me. I have put this in front of him for 40 years, and he has dealt with me. You know what that means? Literally sitting down like at a table and making an exchange. My righteous service for this child. What an exchange. And then she says something that we don't even want to hear in society anymore. He's taken away my reproach. You know what it used to be for a woman who couldn't have a child? It used to be a terrible thing. Who remembers? Like, what happened? And we shouldn't have done that either. But there was this stigma if a woman could not. And you know what she says? They thought of it as a reproach. I just thought of it as sorrow. But he dealt with me, and he's taken it all away, and it's all joy. And they're going to have joy, and I'm going to have joy, and the whole world's going to have joy. And I'm going to make sure that this son is like no other. And boy, was John the Baptist like no other. How would you like Jesus to say this when you got to the gate? There is no greater son born of woman than John the Baptist. Did you remember he said that? What kind of mom did he have? What kind of dad did he have? What kind of family did he have? There's no way, even if, the, even if the Holy Spirit was in him from the beginning, that he turns out that way if he doesn't have the right training. Parents, don't give up. Grandparents, don't give up. Keep training. There are days when I look at the four of them in that household and I go, oh. There are other days I say, take out the dogs. Yes, Grandpa. And I'm like, come here, do you have a fever? Did an alien abduct you in the middle of the night? It's taken us a year to kind of turn this train around. But all of a sudden, they're starting to do what they're supposed to do. It's amazing, right? And, and, and then my wife always says, just bring it down a notch. Does your wife ever say it to you, Craig? Yes. Yeah, because us guys, oh, we'll get that done right now. But the other day, I barked out about six commands, and they all happened. And I, I called him over to me, and I said, well done. Well done. Because I was in a real hurry. <sighs> Elizabeth was a woman of women. You know, it was said about Mary, blessed are you among women, but it could have been said of Elizabeth. Now, here's some theological truth number two. God's plan, after keeping promises, God's plan is always bigger than ours. Isn't that great? Because I always plan too small. How about you? His divine plan seeks to include us. He doesn't have to. He likes to do that. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, sometimes I think, if God got rid of Scott, life would go a lot easier for the world. But he chooses to use us. That's amazing. And he works with us in this perfect communion and unity like they have of the Trinity. And he wants it for us in the church to be that way too, in perfect unity. Husbands and wives, men and women, working side by side. God brought his son into the world to show us how to love like that. He brought him into the world to show us the way to work together. And that was Mary. So there's the other women in our story. Question number four, is there something in your life that seems impossible to solve or resolve? Raise your hand right now if you've got an impossibility. And without a miracle, you're not going to get it, okay? There are two possible solutions while you wait for the response. Now here I'm going to delineate between Zacharias and Elizabeth for a second because at first their responses are different. Zacharias said to the angel, I'm an old man. My wife's well advanced in years. It doesn't work that way biologically. Imagine if scientists today actually said that. That there's no such thing as a birthing person. And that men can menstruate. I'm sorry, I'm going to say some things today. 
Imagine if, you know, imagine if we followed the science. Here's a guy who was the church and a scientist because that's the way they were in those days. And it doesn't work that way. How typical of a man to answer, answer the, one of the highest angels of heaven. It doesn't work that way. Like the angel doesn't know. Like Gabriel, you know, how, God and I talk all the time face to face. You think, we, I watched you made, you crazy man. You think I don't understand your biology? But that's a man for you. Reason and logic first. Huh? Come on. Be honest, guys. What do we do? Right? And, 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 just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. When I said to my wife, she said, you better stop that right now and sit down and listen to how I feel first or you're going to get it with a frying pan. Okay. <laughs> right? Just the facts, ma'am. <laughs> Who remembers that show? <laughs> Elizabeth just conceived. That means she just what? Believed. She, she took that feeling that women have, that men try to hide, and she just said, I'm going to run with that. That's what God said. That'll be good. And he'll just do it. I know him. See, see the difference in the faith? One questions the how. The other's like, nope, it's just going to happen. What seems impossible for us is never impossible for God. How about that for theological truth number three? We need to hear that over and over. God can do anything. If he doesn't do it, it doesn't mean he's not God. It means he has a different will than we do. But he can and we have to have that kind of faith that he can and that he will if it's his will. We cannot ever get outside of that. If we don't, we're not being people of faith. And when he responds, however he responds, you know what we just need to say? Praise the Lord. Praise be to your will being done in the world forever and ever, even though it might not have been what I would have chosen. If you think I would have chosen for two drunk drivers, one a judge in Michigan, to almost kill my wife twice and take away our right to have children one year after we were married and three years after we were married, if you think I wanted her debilitated so we couldn't take long walks to this day, if you think I wanted that, you're out of your mind. But you know what God chose for us? That to happen. That's the burden you accept. And every one of you has one. I'm not making mine bigger or smaller than yours. I'm laying it out for you and telling you how hard it is, even when you have an unbelievable faith in God, to try to understand his will. Because frankly, I don't still get it. But I choose to praise him for it, even when I don't understand it. Because I know he knows what's best. And as a father, I don't always know. For God to act mightily, it requires our complete trust and obedience. The archangel Gabriel said to Mary, Elizabeth just believed, and she has, for who who was called barren, this is now her sixth month. Right? Which means what? She shows. Remember, she hid herself for five months? Why? She doesn't show yet. Now what? She does. So now what? She's out in the open. Now she's showing the world what the Lord has done. See? Baby bump. I guess that's what we call it now. My brother and I used to call it the bulge. But then I explained to him there was a battle. And it had nothing to do with it. All right. <clears throat> hey, this week, let us as God's people this morning be like Zacharias, Elizabeth, and Mary. All three of them give praise to God in the end. Faithful, righteous servants of the Lord. So that we may, may be used for his divine plan. That's the key. If we're faithful, God can use us when he needs to. He can plug us right into that day, right where we need to be. Amen? And he'll, sh and he'll show us that nothing is impossible by doing it. He'll fulfill his plans. He'll fulfill his divine plan through us by our faith and our obedience. There's always the way. So ladies, stay faithful to the Lord no matter what the other ladies in the world tell you to do. God's faithful daughter, Mary's response was like this. Let it be done to me according to your word. A 15-year-old. I'm ready to be pregnant for the Lord. I'm ready for everyone to make fun of me all of my life and say it was a man and I just lied about it. I'm ready to be the outcast of society. I'm ready to suffer at the cross the day my son dies and they lay him in my arms and my heart is pierced with a sword. You hear what Mary was saying? Because it is your will, O oh Father, 
and I am your daughter. Let it be done to me as you say. Not as I would want this life to be. She didn't plan that life. Neither did Joseph. Right? But they were told otherwise. Theological truth number four. Is he ever going to stop this morning? Maybe not. God desires to give us the desire of our heart in his good and perfect will by giving you what is the desire of your heart. You know what mine is? To be present with you and the Lord forever and ever. How about you? Isn't that the desire of your heart? Yeah? Bass fishing at the best hole ever. The Mike Coley hole. <laughs> okay. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. That, that, that is what Mary and, and Mary and Joseph wanted. That's what Zacharias and Elizabeth wanted. They just wanted to do the will of the Lord over and over and over. And then God will act, but it requires us to always give him adoration, praise, thanksgiving, and worship, even if he makes us have sorrow. And our greatest faith is in moments of sorrow that we bow our head and praise and worship the Lord anyway. When the world goes amok, when things in our country fall apart, and we praise and honor and worship the Lord. The world sees that as one thing, faithfulness. And who is God? The faithful one. Every time you step out and do it again and again, no matter what they do, Every time you remain faithful, the world says, there's one, there's one indeed. Notice what I said there? In your deeds, indeed. And they cannot say hypocrite, and they cannot say. <clears throat> Here's God's faithful daughter responding to what God wants. Look what it says. The babe was filled with the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth, he hears Mary, but whose presence is with Mary? The Son of God. The Holy Spirit inside of John, inside of her womb, the Holy Spirit inside the womb of, of, of Mary with Jesus, co-mingle and co-speak. And people always say, I wonder when babies come to life. Well, six-month-old knows what? God's presence, and is responding from the womb as a full-fledged believer in God six months into the pregnancy. The mind, the soul, the whole body leaping for joy. The word here in Hebrew is doing somersaults. He's not just going, oh, he's being a typical boy, punching at the womb, flipping upside down. Break dance and I can't do it. I'm white. Anyway, listen to me. Joy in the spirit. Six months into the pregnancy. It never says what Jesus' response was as a ball of cells. So small you could hardly see it. But obviously, the Holy Spirit in all of its fullness is there. Maybe, maybe there was just a little wave. Maybe the cells just caressed. But there was this communion of God and men because a woman was faithful and another woman was faithful. Women being faithful. And look what it says about Elizabeth. She was filled to the brim with the Holy Spirit. What comes out next are not her words. It is the Spirit's words. Oh, Mary, blessed are you among all the women who have ever lived. I'm going to translate now for the Hebrew. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. I know it's written in Greek, but she's been speaking in Hebrew. Blessed is the fruit that all of us partake in and having children, but blessed is this one, holy and divine above all others. This one will bless us back. For every nation shall call you blessed. Blessed. Why is this unbelievable gift given to such a lowly woman in her old age that the mother who's housing my Lord should visit me in my own home? I want you to say this to yourself. Who am I that the Holy Spirit visits me every day? Who am I? 
From the moment I heard your voice, my child proceeded to do the gymnastic dance of heaven. And he will not stop. Joy is contagious. Do you know that? If you have it, someone else will get it. If you're depressed, someone else will get that too. If you're complaining, someone else will get that too. You ever notice how these different emotions are just kind of contagious? I think, I think that child, by the power of the Holy Spirit, leapt with joy first, and then that joy just permeated her, and then she allowed herself to be filled anew with the Spirit at that moment. <clears throat> Blessed is this one, this one woman, who stands in for Eve for all of us. This is what she's saying. Who stands in for Eve for all of us. Who believed what was, to what was told to Eve in the garden. And from your womb shall come one who will crush the head of the serpent while he, strikes our, while he tries to strike your heel mortally. And finally, all of our sin will be forgiven. For this one is the Lord of lords. That's what Elizabeth says. Now, how, how powerful is that? Huh? And the first voice, the first good news of the entire New Testament is a woman. Zacharias would have had the first say, but what did he do? He started with that reason and logic stuff again. Got himself in trouble. Faith just speaks, and Elizabeth is allowed to speak first. You know why? What happened in the garden? Remember we've talked about this before? Remember what Eve tried to do? She tried to take her husband's place. Then the whole thing got out of whack. Then they started nailing each other in marriage, and there started to be a feud. Remember? Remember? She looked for the assertion of the power. She tried to take it from God and from her husband and put herself first as God. And he allowed it. He was just as guilty. But they tried to put themselves before God. They tried to be the leader. What's Elizabeth saying? Mary, you humbled yourself so low, you put yourself back. You rewrote what Eve lost. Thank you for being the true Eve. Thank you even for redeeming her by bringing forth your son who will redeem you and me and the whole world. That's what Elizabeth's saying. How important now is it to have children? How important now is it to bring forth the next generation? My mother lost my sister two and a half years before I was born in a very tragic day. She was born and she died within a matter of an hour. And my parents wondered if they would ever have children. With me, she had multiple complications. She feared the same thing would happen. When I came out normal, well, I don't know about that, you might say, but maybe that was what happened. Maybe my head got pushed too hard one side. When she saw I was normal, she said she cried for over an hour, and the, and the, and, and the nurses thought she had what, was, what then was, they called it something different, but we, today we call it postpartum depression. She said, no, 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 you don't understand. I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. He just would not die. That's all. Then after me, she lost another daughter in between. So I have a sister named Mary and a sister named Jennifer. I can't wait. This is my, this is my, my, my first thing I want to do when I get to heaven. I mean, I know I'm going to bow at Jesus. Don't get me wrong. I want to take their two hands with my brother and the four of us just run. Because I have an older sister that I look up to. I used to go to her grave every year with my dad when he was alive. Every May, <clears throat> I'm sorry, March 1st, every March 1st on the Ides of March, we would cry in front of a little lamb. That was my first memory of being at, at a grave. And my dad would tell me about his, my sister. And then my grandchildren, Natalia and Uriah, were born the same day. <laughs> and when I held Natalia, and I looked at her dark hair, because my mother has jet black German hair, jet black. It was like I was looking into the face of what I was robbed of. Not only in not having my own children from the womb, but my own sisters. And I looked at Uriah and I said, what a pair. And they were born one minute different from her. That many years later, 1961, to 2018, and here I'm standing in Alaska, and I'm figuring it out, the, the Eastern Daylight Savings Time from the 
from that time. And my, my, the nurse said, what are you doing? I said, I'm back calculating five hours. Give me a second. And she said, why? And why are you crying so profusely? I said, my sister was born 47 years, you know, 57 years ago, one minute from this time on the same coast, on the East Coast. God wants us to speak. And Elizabeth spoke. Ladies, speak. Last theological truth. God will give us the desire of our heart. Not only in our offspring, but in an eternal inheritance of all those we share the gospel with. Share the gospel this week. You've shared it and you say, I don't want to share it anymore. I got rejected the last time. Share it again. I shared it and no one responded. Share it again. I have a date this week on Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm going to try to find out by going there. Maybe I might have to drive there twice, but I'm driving to a Phillips 66 station past White House because one of the ladies in this church handed out a track, met with this guy, and he actually conversed back with her, and they actually got into a conversation about God. And she told me, his name is Sam, Samuel, and, and he was doing my gas, and, and, and Pastor, I do this all the time, but this time I got a response. And I'm convinced he was sincere, the gas station attendant. So I told her, this week I'll try to figure out a way to get out there. Now, if I go out there and he's not working, they probably won't tell me. You know how it is today, but I'll try to find out when his schedule is. I am going to make sure I run into him and say, you met this lovely, lovely lady of our church. Her name is so-and-so. I'm the pastor. I've been praying for you along with her this whole week. I want you to know God was in that conversation 100%, and he follows through. Because it's about souls. Not only the ones we raise in the household, but the ones that we come from the outside. It is this object of constantly, remember, service and what? Seeking those who are lost. And so, I wonder how many souls John the Baptist turned back to God. Can you imagine just seeing that list of all those who got baptized before, before Jesus came down to be baptized? Can you imagine how many he spoke after before he was thrown in prison and beheaded for the faith? How many owe their salvation to a godly man named John who had a godly mother named Elizabeth and a godly father named Zechariah? Look what it says here. Everybody in the village rejoiced. Everybody in the surrounding country came to hear about it. Everybody wondered what this would mean for the future of the world because this doesn't happen. 60-year-old women don't have children. Zacharias was mute. What happens next is he asks for a tablet. We'll get into that with the Father's Day. And all of a sudden, his voice is open. Then he gives a canticle of praise. <clears throat> Final word before we end. When we get to Father's Day, you'll realize something. Elizabeth is the first to speak. Mary's in the middle because Jesus is the most important. Elizabeth, and Zacharias speaks as a pair of bookends. Isn't that amazing? Remember how this started? They were both walking blameless in every way. Now it's going to end with both of them praising God. Please rise. Faithful and holy children of God, our Heavenly Father, and receive this day his divine blessing on you as grandfathers, grandmothers, godfathers, godmothers, fathers, mothers, sons, and daughters. By the way, there's no way I could have left anybody out. Okay? Amen? Father, you love us all. Bless these women and bless these men who support these women this entire rest of this year coming out from Mother's Day to day. And may their hearts always be open to the lost and the broken. And may their hearts always be open to those who do not know you. And may their love and compassion as true daughters of God, the Father, come and bring them into the kingdom by such love that they've never been loved that way on the face of the earth. To you, who is love, our God, for God is love. Come now and bless us and bless these daughters. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let's, let's sing our final song. <clears throat>
So let's sing this one last, this one final song before we uh, depart this morning. And it's, um, it's another song where we just uh, recognize the holiness, the greatness of God. Um, <clears throat> down, we lay our crown at the feet of Jesus, the greatness of mercy and love at the feet of Jesus, and we cry, holy, 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 and we cry, holy, holy, holy. At the feet of Jesus, the greatness of mercy and love. At the feet of Jesus, and we cry, holy, 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 and we cry, holy, holy, holy. benediction today we will read from proverbs four verses let's do it together who can find a virtuous wife and woman her children will rise up and call her blessed her husband also and he praises her many daughters have done well but you excel them all charm is deceitful and beauty is passing but a woman who fears the lord she shall be praised give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the city gates. Now may the God and Father of us all bless you all this day and every day. And may his spirit remain with you always until the end of the age. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Happy Mother's Amen. Day. <clears throat> and age to age he stands. Time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. God had three and one. God, her spirit, son, the lion and the lamb, the lion and the lamb. How great. How great, how great is our God. Name above all names, worthy of all praise. One will sing how great is our God. Above all names, sing with me how worthy of all praise. My heart will sing how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great 
is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. You all will see how great, how great is our God.